All right, so here's what we know at this point. Around 4.40 this morning, we received a 911 call about a shooting that happened here in the parking lot behind me on McKinley and Fowler. What we have learned, and again, this is all very early in the investigation, is that two cars were shot at. Four people were shot in total as a result of this. Three of them were transported to hospitals and one was pronounced deceased here on the scene. Tampa police are trying to track down whoever killed Jacksonville rapper Charles Jones, better known by his stage name, Julio Fulio. That deadly shooting happened just before five this morning in a parking lot at the Holiday Inn on East Fowler Avenue. The rapper's attorney says his client was ambushed. Bullet holes riddled the windshield of this car in the parking lot of the Holiday Inn on East Fowler Avenue. A Jacksonville attorney confirmed to us the victim is 26-year-old Charles Jones, better known as Julio Fulia. This isn't the first time Jones has been attacked. Just last year, the rapper was shot in a Jacksonville parking lot. He was wounded but survived. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office called that shooting an ambush. Now, I'm sure by now we've all heard the news about rapper Julio Fulio getting shot on his birthday and losing his life. It hasn't been the most shocking news of 2024, to say the least. In fact, most people are saying that they could have seen this coming or predicted this months ago just based off of how Julio was moving throughout the years. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the story and everything that we know so far. Sunday, June 23rd, 2024, at about 4.40 a.m., officers responded to a 911 call about a shooting on McKinley Drive in Tampa near a cluster of hotels. When they arrived on the scene, they found two vehicles that had been sprayed up in the parking lot. They said they were investigating what led up to the shooting and working to identify people that were involved. But what they did know is that one person in this incident was killed and three others were taken to the hospital, all suffering from injuries relating to the incident. Now, at first, police didn't publicly identify who the victim was that died, but within hours, it became public information that the one person that was dead was 26-year-old Charles Jones, better known to the world as Julio Fulio. Julio Fulio. Julio Fulio. Julio Fulio was shot and killed in Tampa overnight. The rapper was celebrating his 26th birthday. He was one of four people shot. So as you just heard, Julio Fulio was out trying to celebrate his 26th birthday when things took a turn for the worse, resulting in him losing his life. And as I stated earlier, this really didn't come as a surprise to anybody because Julio's been moving recklessly out here in these streets for a long time. In fact, the way that he moves so disrespectfully is part of the reason why he ever blew up in the first place. Because if you go back and listen to Julio's catalog, a lot of his earlier songs were songs where he was disrespecting dead ops, taking shots at his competition, and really just in general portraying himself as a savage. A good example of this is when he jumped on the beatbox instrumental and took shots at a young man named Corbin. And this song got so hot and so popular that it even became a TikTok trend, and basically Julio had turned this kid's death into a trend. The murder of an 18-year-old Jacksonville man becomes the center of a nationwide TikTok trend. Corbin Johnson disappeared in 2018. His remains were found a year later. Corbin got kidnapped. They found his bones. He was right. Was Corbin. Johnson's mother, Melissa Jackson, reported her son missing in 2018. His remains found in a wooded area in 2019. His death ruled a murder. She was surprised to learn the hashtag Where's Corbin reached up to 3.9 million views on TikTok. The song used in the TikToks was released last year. It's called Beatbox Remix Bibby Flow by local rapper Julio Fulio. Corbin got kidnapped. They found his bones. He was right. Where's Corbin? Tell me I say, Where's Corbin? I don't know what Corbin at. But yeah, that's all I had to say. But that's just one good example, as Fulio did this dozens of times on dozens of tracks. Now, Julio Fulio was connected with the clique out of Jacksonville, Florida, called KTA, and they had beef with another local group there called ATK. Some of y'all may remember the ATK Scotty video that I did on this channel. That was in relation to the beef between these two. And one of the incidents that really blew Julio Fulio up and another rapper from Jacksonville named Young and Ace was a disastrous incident in which Young and Ace seen three of his homeboys getting shot and killed after they went out to celebrate 
celebrate this dude named 23's birthday. Now, 23 and Young and Ace were supposedly best friends, and Young and Ace was the sole survivor in this incident. A shooter or shooters on the run after four teens are gunned down to the south side. What we're learning about the men killed in a drive-by shooting. 18-year-old Trayvon Bullard, 19-year-old Jacoby Groover, and 18-year-old Royale Smith. They lost their lives late last night. Police say the shooter followed the three along with a fourth survivor from a restaurant at the St. John's Town Center to the Town Center Parkway, then opened fire. Sheriff Mike Williams says this shooting is gang-related, not an accident. Since then, we have learned a lot about those four victims. A family friend of Kenyatta and Trevon Bullard tells News for Jax that the two brothers were out with Royale Smith and Jacoby Grover Tuesday night celebrating Smith's birthday when the celebration turned to tragedy. Police say the men were all riding together in this car on Town Center Parkway when people in another car that pulled up beside them started shooting at them. Kenyatta Bullard, who goes by the nickname Ace, was the only person in the car who survived the attack. After this happened between KTA and ATK, Julio Fulio didn't make it a secret that him or the people around him may have been involved with the death of 23, who again died on his birthday. Julio Fulio would make a remix to Fantasia's hit single, When I See You, except for on this song, he wasn't talking about love. Instead, he directed bars directly at Young and Ace and Ace's crew, even dropping lines like this right here. Ace from the west, how he clicked up with the east side. He ain't been the same since he seen them other three die. Damn, I'm two, three high. Say your goodbye. When not to eat on his birthday, four shot, three dead in the worst way. Damn. He kept this on me. E. What happened? Now we smoking 23. E. <laughs> You always on my mind, you always on my mind. Riding down Melvin with that iron, I don't see you. I don't see you. You did like two, three, two. <laughs> Happy birthday. In fact, with the news of Fulio passing like that, people started listening to his old catalog and couldn't help but notice how ominous it was that he was talking disrespectfully on the track about 23 who died on his birthday trying to go out to eat just that he himself a few years later end up the victim of pretty much the exact same circumstance except for in Young and Ace's case, four people were shot, three died and he was the only survivor. In Julio's situation, four people were shot, three survived and only he died. Is it karma? Maybe. It could have been that or it could have been that on this particular night, Julio just wasn't moving with the same caution that he particularly had. He was being what could only be described as careless, dropping his location numerous times throughout the night and inviting any and everybody to pull up to where he was at. The first example of this comes in the form of a flyer that he posted on his Instagram account on July 14th, about a week before the night he was killed. Letting every Everybody know exactly what club he was going to be at, what time it was going to be, and even let it be known that he was going to be in an Airbnb as well. Now, given the history and the beef that he's had with other people in the past, this wasn't really a smart idea, but who knows? He could have been contractually obligated by a promoter to post this because he was also booked to do a performance that night. The day of his birthday, Julio went on Instagram and made several Instagram story posts where he told people that he was going to be having a pool party told him what time it was gonna be and even showed off the airbnb that he was staying in the pool party start the day at five six o'clock if you already got the address pull up man you got the address pull up if you need the address dm me right now the pool party start at five six o'clock dm me for the address of dm fulio booking espn i'm gonna put it right here we just got here bro you got to add it you got to add it man push up we just got to this bit. Tampa, Florida, man. You got already got to add it to the pool party. Push up at 530, man. Push up at 530, man. We finna get that thing right. Push up at 530, 6 o'clock, man. It's up. Less than seven hours later, Julio would still be posting on his Instagram. This time he was inside the house and had a bunch of random people around him, females, dudes, and they was all drinking. And Julio would even let it slip on camera that he was turning up and it. Under normal circumstances, he wouldn't even drink. Letting it be known to the ops that he may be in an altered mind state, which at the end of the day, really only made it that much easier for him to pull up and hawk him down. Me drinking, cuz. <laughs> I don't need drink, cuz. 
<laughs> You're supposed to have a chase there. Mm-mm. <laughs> Appreciate everybody popping out for my birthday, you know what I'm saying? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Everybody got their shot, put their shot in the air, man. Yeah. Okay, David. Everybody take this shit on three, man. One, two, three. Mmm. Hey, birthday, mm. Not only did he post this, but shortly after, he made another post where he let it be known that they was actually kicked out of the Airbnb because the party had went over the occupancy limit. And then he made another post thanking everybody that popped out on him, saying he had the best birthday ever and that they turned up till they couldn't turn up no more. He then said he was on his way to the show and asked people to pull up there as well. He then posted a video showing him and his honorage going up the steps of Truth 18, a local club there in Tampa and even dropped the location for it as well essentially once again telling anybody who wanted to do harm to him exactly where he was at we can't deep a fuck for my birthday man everybody talking about this spell you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying we deep as hell we deep as hell 20 deep lit everywhere we go Shortly after is when the incident at the Holiday Inn took place where Julio Fulio found himself being on the wrong end of an ambush. And people are basically saying that he didn't make it very hard for whoever wanted to take him out to get him. He dropped his location multiple times throughout the night. Pretty much told people that he wasn't in a clear state of mind. And it probably wouldn't have been hard for somebody to just pull up to the after party show he was at. Wait a little while for him to come out and then follow him over to the Holiday Inn jump out on him and light him up and keep in mind most of his problems came with people that he got into it with locally in jacksonville he was in tampa when this happened he was moving like he was a thousand miles away from these guys but in reality bro you was just right down the road tampa is only about three hours from jacksonville and that's if you go in the speed limit somebody could easily make it in two hours and 30 minutes two hours if they wanted to you know speed a little bit so it's not like he was moving in in a place that he was protected and super safe in he was right down the road from the guys that he had problems with four hours after julio was shot at the holiday Inn, his girlfriend would post on twitter and say y'all took my boyfriend from me i hate y'all and i won't be the only one crying this tweet has been viewed over five million times now look this is something that even julio fulio himself probably seen coming in fact just a few weeks ago he made this post right here on instagram that said I'm probably finna die soon. I'm getting all the fake love from around me. So it seemed like he knew what the risk was with the life that he was living. Anyway, so after all of this happened, people started looking. They started wondering, you know, who could be responsible for this? And obviously the first place people went to look is to the rappers that he's had beef with in the past. One of those rappers being Young and Ace. See, this wasn't the first time that Julio had been targeted in an attack like this all the way back in 2020 julio became the victim of an ambush style attack in houston texas where he ended up actually getting shot from this incident we seen probably one of the most viral diss songs that's ever been recorded come out when spinner bins whopper with a chopper young and ace and fast money goon dropped the song who i smoke and in the fourth verse of the song we can hear lyrics that essentially refer to that shooting Told the rocket when I travel, I'm pistol packing in you. I was lurking on his page and I caught him lacking in you. We let out shots, he got shot and went live. I'm just living life. Man, that bitch ain't died. Bitch, uh, nigga shot me, but he didn't kill me. I'm Kendrick. You fucking stupid. Just about one year after this incident, Julio found himself being targeted again, this time becoming the victim of a drive-by shooting. And just like the time before this, he went to Instagram Live to talk about it, mocking the people who did it, saying that he know they were sick, that they missed a whole hundred shots, essentially quoting the Young Dolph song where Dolph talked about people that shot at him missing a hundred shots. Hey, stop saying on the police post that. Listen, how you turn it up? Listen, on oh, trading my gun and register, I shot back in self defense. Y'all dumb. I shot back in self defense. You don't know think if I did something illegal, I would be in jail? The police put me in the back of the car. Type of 
dead miss a whole hundred shots though. You know they sick right now. Whoever did it, they sick. One is one. They had two choppers, one me. I'm blowing back. Trade it. Two years after this, Julio found himself being a victim of another drive-by when he was in his car. Somebody pulled up and sprayed the whole vehicle up. This time, getting hit in the foot. Now, I ain't gonna put it in here, but there's pictures around that show the damage that was done. And you could see that it basically shattered all of the bones in his foot. And after this happened, he went on say cheese with Sean Cotton and gave an interview where he talked about it. We all know you got shot in the foot. Yeah. Um you know, last week and, you know, you don't have to tell us too many details, but, you know, we pretty much know, you know, you were, you were driving, correct? Yeah, I was driving. Is, is this daytime, nighttime? This or like five, six in the morning, probably six thirty, something like that. Wait, six thirty in the morning? Yeah, yeah. I was up, I was up the whole night tight. My dumb ass, I'm nicking. I'm like, I want to go get a vape from the store. So I hopped in the car and I guess I got ambushed. Somebody was waiting on me when I pulled out the driveway. And I saw the car, like I saw a little glimpse of the car. But by the time I got to the stop sign, they hopped out and went to shoot and they shot the car. Then I just went to hit and I went to drive and type shit. So basically the bullet went through the car and hit your foot? Yeah, it went through like the bottom like door type. Before I even got to the hospital, like after the, I stopped hearing the shots, I got to another stop sign and I busted right and I stopped. I tried to hop out. I hopped out of the car and I couldn't, I couldn't like use both of my feet. I fell straight to the ground and I mm. crawled behind the car. When I crawled behind this car, I'm like, what the? F I think my foot, bro. I got hit in the foot. So mm. I get up. I walked to the house I um, pulled to. I don't even know them from a can of paint, but I could see through the window. It's a n sitting on the Couch. I don't know if you're watching TV. What the fuck he doing? I'm banging <laughs> on his door like, hey, help. I need help. Like, I'm shot type. And I'm hitting this little door ring type, the little doorbell shit. He ain't come to the door. So I had to hop back to the car and drive to the hospital after that. So as you can see, Julio was no stranger to the danger. He knew what the life he was living brought with it. And he knew what a critical failure could lead to in regards to him and his life. So you would think that he would move even more diligently than expected. But on this particular night, the night of his 26th birthday, he experienced one of those critical failures in multiple ways in his judgment, his actions, his movements, ultimately resulting in somebody pulling up, blowing him down and snuffing his life out. Now, almost as soon as it happened the internet investigators armchair sleuths went to work trying to figure out who could have been responsible for this and their investigations led them to look into several people aside from young and ace and one of those people was this local promoter named ari who people quickly started to point the finger at because she was having a party the night of and it was the party that julio fulio was going to and people essentially were saying that this chick backdoored julio and the the reason that they were saying that is because she was actually posting on her Instagram in real time asking Julio to come to the party and then even announcing when he actually showed up. And a lot of people were assuming that this was a last minute type of thing because on those Instagram stories, you could see her saying that she wanted Julio to pull up, asking to pull up. Then when he pulled up, she was like, guess who I got to come? Three demon face emojis. And this led to people believing that Julio didn't even know this chick. Like he just seen that he was tagged in a post he was in the area so he pulled up to her party and then here she is posting in real time that he was at that party a party that people were assuming was full of people that julio don't know from a hole in the ground so this is where the rumors that she backdoored julio came from but she actually did respond to everything everybody was saying with the video where she basically said look i don't know what none of y'all are talking about bro i gotta defend myself in this situation i ain't have that man set up and i didn't have nothing to do with what happened to him okay y'all gonna got me out of bed because at this point i'm getting death threats um i'm getting phone calls i'm getting text messages and i just gotta let y'all know what it is like i had nothing to do with fulio's death fulio me and fulio was texting he came to my event um you know he popped out he was in a section he had him a bottle and then he dipped um we did not know where he was going after that um at the club it was good vibes nothing negative so you know, we, we didn't assume nothing after. Um, but all this texting my team, texting me, it just don't sit right with me. Like, 
I don't even feel comfortable walking out of my own house right now, you know, because of this whole situation. Cause I just feel like, you know, y'all fans are being hotheads or whatever, whatever the situation may be. And the only reason I'm really talking about it right now is because, you know, me and my team were receiving all these nasty messages, especially, you know, from people that don't know what happened, don't know the situation. At, you know, at our event, it was good vibes, nothing negative. And that's what, you know, that's what we can say. We're sending our heart out to his family, his friends, especially the other three people who got shot as well. And we just not, you know, we're going to keep it at that. We ain't had nothing to do with it. There was no setup. There was no nothing. So that's what she had to say about it. Now, does this mean that she didn't play a part in Julio getting popped? Nah, but it also doesn't mean that she did play a part in Julio getting popped. I think if anything, she may have inadvertently alerted somebody to his location that night. But let's keep it a thousand here, bro. If she was trying to backdoor Julio, couldn't she have just sent a text over to whoever did the sliding on him? Like she didn't need to post him on the story and say that he was here right now in real time if she was really trying to backdoor him because she could have just sent a text over to whoever did this so i don't think that she played any part in it intentionally now did whoever did this to julio see her story and know that that's where he was at because of it i mean i guess it's possible but let's be realistic bro this was a fan who was having a party who happened to at julio and then he just happened to show up she was just fanned out posting his location on instagram i don't think there was nothing nefarious with that so moving on to the next Next person that the internet targeted for their investigation and that's this dude named mizzle now throughout the day on julio's 26th birthday he was seen posting numerous videos photos and then pretty much all of them you can see this guy right here this guy's name is mizzle and like i just said he was with julio pretty much all day the day that this happened and they seem to be real close real tight so after people noticed that he was in these videos with julio that day of they started looking into him and they ended up finding and this picture of him with another dude named Backstreet TK. And Backstreet TK and Julio have had some problems in the past. Infamously, there was a clubhouse phone call where Julio and Backstreet were both on that call. And Backstreet was being pretty disrespectful, telling Julio that he needed to post his homies every time he smoked one of them. It was crazy. Beat the f out of you. Uh -huh. Just be ready. Like, when I, when I DM you and say post them, you better post them. <laughs> post what? Post him. When I say post him, I'm going to DM you and say post him. Hey, Bat Screep, shut up. Bat Screep, just chill. Bat Screep. Hey, bro, you talking about something? Bro, bro listen. I ain't talking about nothing, bit. Nah, I promise. Bro, listen, bro. I was saying over your goofy ass. Ain't shit going on nah, happening, bro. Are you trying to act like... Bro, bro, I'm, bro, I'm letting you, letting you know. Huh? I'm letting you know, TK. Bit, nah, I'm not. On shoot, I'm letting you know. I'm not talking about you, bro. You acting like real weird. Eating sounded too creepy. That bit nine. I don't like that. Bit nine. Y'all gonna get y'all shot. <laughs> you, hey, you gonna do that though, Fulio? Do what? Shot. Damn y'all. You said I did what? TK. What? So people dug up this clubhouse phone call where Backstreet was talking real disrespectful to Julio. On top of that, they found pictures of Backstreet TK actually with Young and Ace. They noticed that he was following a lot of people that are connected to Young and Ace. And then right after Julio was killed, Backstreet TK was on Instagram making story posts, one with the song called Beautiful Day. And then the next story post was actually a Young and Ace music video, his most recent one, where he was seemingly dissing julio in the video so this guy mizzle is kicking it with julio's ops which made people think you know hey, you gotta watch who you call your people because this dude is clearly close with people that directly do not like you so the optics of it look real bad however mizzle did seem to respond to all of the claims and rumors going around he reposted this on his instagram story which i guess was originally made by julio's cousin so mizzle reposted this on his story it says to clear up all the rumors that all the blogs is posting mizzle did not set fulio up nor was he playing both sides fulio is my little cousin trust me we know he wasn't set up by mizzle can y'all please stop posting that y'all trying to play detective and y'all is wrong and then up underneath that mizzle said the ones that matter the most know the truth
So did Mizzle set Julio up? Man, who knows? He's denying it. People are linking him to people who actually may be involved with this. So, I mean, only time will tell no arrest has been made in that case yet. So there's no way to really know until that happens. However, Julio actually had real enemies out here. So instead of looking at the people that's closest to him, it may be more beneficial to, you know, the case to actually look at the people that he was having problems with. So back to the ATK camp, as soon as news broke, Broke that Julio had passed away. We started seeing people from ATK post on their Instagram. This dude foul out Sosa said dying on the 23rd is crazy work. And remember Julio was dissing that dude 23 who went out to eat on his birthday and died. Young and Ace was the only survivor. He said dying on the 23rd is crazy work. Queso, which if y'all don't know who Queso is in my ATK Scotty video I did, I go over some of the stuff that happened with Queso, but he posted the date June 23rd with this laughing emoji. And then Spinner Benz, who was on the song Who I Swear smoke posted this up when he realized that it was hitting the blogs and he basically just added the song today was a good day by ice cube and then this dude atk quizzy posted on the 23rd celebrating your b day man i'm finna smoke a whole six g's in a wood today so basically they were celebrating as soon as they found out and to be honest somebody from third click is probably the most likely suspect but as i stated julio had a lot of problems with a lot of people so he was started to look elsewhere other people that he was having issues with and that led them to a smaller beef that he was having back in the day that was connected to the atk beef but with rappers from out of the state of florida and that was jada youngins people so if y'all remember i posted the jada youngins story after he passed away from being shot on his front porch out in bogalusa louisiana it's a fatal shooting that's grabbed national headlines with a well-known rapper killed in his hometown of Bogalusa. Officials say a family member was also shot and survived. Mike McDaniel has spoken with investigators in the case and he's joining us live now with more details on it all. Mike. Hey there, Katie. Javaria Scott, a rapper who goes by the stage name J.D. Youngin, was just 24 years old. In his very short music career, he was really able to make a name for himself, not just in his hometown here in Bogalusa, but also the music industry. He died last night after police say he was shot multiple times. He and another man, who family members say was his father, Kenyatta, Sr., Ken Kenyatta Scott Sr., were shot outside of a home on Superior Avenue. Now, Kenyatta was shot twice and injured. He's expected to be okay. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Now, J.D. Youngin, ironically, was also known under the name 23. That was kind of like his brand. And he was cool with Youngin, Ace, and ATK in a year or two before he passed away. So as soon as J.D. Youngin died, Julio went on Instagram and wasted no time clowning him. He posted this up that said, R.I.P. J.D. Youngin, you will be missed with some heart emojis and then LOL. And he had a picture of J.D. Youngin clicked up with Youngin, Ace in a music video that they did. He said, do you used to diss me? Me just to be cool with the ops even got them boys name tatted now look and when he was asked about this on instagram live he took the time to address it saying that his problem specifically with jada youngin is that he clicked up with young and ace became cool with him and then started dissing julio think about it like this think about it like this bro say if you from out of town right you from out of town i'm from jacksonville though me and my ops we from jacksonville you from out of town, right? So you see what we got going on. So just cause you rocking with a rapper, you rocking with a n that don't f with me. You act like you my art now. You know what I'm saying? So now you act like you my art. Now you dissing me and so on, saying elf my dad, homeboys, this and that. How I'ma feel? What I just put to sit back, just you know what I'm saying? Be quiet. Don't say nothing. If it was me on the other end, they did the same thing. They would have turned up. You know what I'm saying? This man used to wear the baby jerseys. He used to wear the baby jerseys all type. Like, he done this man song. Now, I had to explain all of that to get to the next part or the next person that people targeted for their internet investigation. The Jada Youngin had a homie named 23KB. Not to be confused with KB Goes Live, but he had this homie 23KB. And after Jada Youngin died and Julio was clowning him, this dude KB actually hopped on an Instagram Live with Julio where they chopped it up. And the conversation comes off really passive aggressively, right? Like they're not really yelling at each other or being crazy on there, but if you listen 
listening to what they saying 23kb basically told julio bro when i see you it's up why you want to dig that like that oh yeah let me remove this so you won't think i'm trolling what's up brody cool on you at bro i'm in dyesville right now i'm in the city i'm saying man pass me some hoes my god damn crap about him Man, where you at, bro? I'm trying to link up and show a video or something. I'm in Jacksonville, bro. I ain't gonna count, bro. Can I ask you a question? No, there's not no interview. <laughs> Stupid ass nigga. <laughs> I don't wanna do interviews like that. Ah, uh, yeah, say T shit, though. Nah, you trying to get on. You trying to. You, you want to get on the blogs, bro? Hey, you know that how to beat you like that. Hey, look, 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 that was too all about, huh? Them blogs. Nope. Yeah. Nah, nah, real shit on, um, bro. I was straight beat you like with straight hands type shit. You feel me? You think I'm gonna fight you, bro? Damn, that shit that deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fuck over you, boy. You know, it's we don't want to fight no more. That shit that deep, brother. That shit crazy. I'm saying, though, you know, this is, you know, I'm just cool, though. I fuck with your music, though. Keep it 100, okay? But it's not no real smoke between us, y'all. But that's been that. It's it just like, it's just like, you be, you just be speaking on my bro, you know? But listen, like, keep it 100, though. Like, no funny shit on Bitter. How you would feel, though? Look, look, though, look. Real shit, though, I'm asking. No, 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 let me ask you something, know. though. If we see each other, it's going to be that, though. KB. Come on. Man, though, it ain't no, it ain't no just. Yeah, like, I don't know. But if we see each other, it's going to be that. No, I ain't gonna care. No, like, it's not no. I can't be for no out of town, no, bro. That, that shit weird. Right, you we ain't that? gotta be, bro. It ain't. We don't have to beef with each other. Feel me? But if we see each other, it's gonna be that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I ain't saying I'm beefing with you. I'm gonna okay. be, bro. I don't want you to beat me up, punch me in my mouth, bro. Do whatever you I'm want. Like, to I'm like, I don't want no pressure with your gangsta ass. Man, I'll be cooling, bro, for real. But I'm saying, though, <laughs> if I see you, it's dead, though. But we ain't got no beef, for real. So how is that? I don't for get sure. it. Like, you, you losing me, bro. I don't right, just, 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 just listen to what I tell you, my nigga. Like, it, we ain't even got a politic about that. We ain't, feel me? Send me a song, man. Like, what studio you go to? <laughs> <laughs> you trying to bad dope me, that's it. Oh, bro. look, what studio you go to? Man, I go to the way you go to, bro. I be, I, I go to the way you go to, bro. Oh, I don't ever see you. I can't go out like that. You can, hey, listen, man. That shit over with, man. I can't man. go like that. Yeah. So as you can see, there was clearly some tension between these two due to the dissing that had went back and forth between Julio and JD Youngin. Well, when Julio died, this dude KB went on Instagram almost instantly. He posted up on his story. He said the Holiday Inn is a five-star hotel. Loved them. And then he added Holiday Inn. And as we covered earlier, Julio died at the Holiday Inn Express. But that's not all that he posted because less than 24 hours after Julio was taken out, he post pictures actually at the Holiday Inn Express and then shortly after that he followed it up with a music video that he shot at this Holiday Inn Express y'all look at this like my chain, that's a brand new fucking casualty. New casualty. What's his brain for that fame? May he rest in peace. Pop him out the frame. Cut out, bang. Let him feel the heat. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to do him bad. Now, either this is some top tier self incrimination right here going on, or this dude is trolling for clout. One of the two, but after he put this song out and them pictures out, he realized that people were starting to think, you know, he might have had something to do with it. So he made an attempt to clear the air and went back on IG and made this post right here. This said, All I do is chase checks. I don't know nothing about nothing for real. Now, does that clear his name? I don't know. Y'all got to decide or wait till the police figure out who did this crime. But that beef that Julio and KB was having came from JD Youngin's association with Young and Ace and Young and Ace was also celebrating Julio's death. In fact, we talked about the irony of Julio dissing 23 who went out to eat on his birthday and then their car got sprayed up. Four people were hit, three died. Young and Ace was the only survivor just for Julio to go out essentially the same way because four people were hit during his incident. However, three of them survived and he was the only one that passed. Well, Young and Ace actually made a post after Julio died on his Instagram story and when he announced that he was dropping a new music video which turned out to be kind of like a diss towards Julio and he attached 50 Cent's Mini Man song to it and one part in particular y'all look at this 
Cause he got hit like I got hit, but he ain't fucking breathing. Now, those were the first couple of people everybody was looking at when it came to who might have been responsible. But the truth is, man, Julio Fulio was moving recklessly out here for a long time. And this man had beef with almost every big name rapper you can mention. And most of it was over something petty or something small. But he managed to find himself or make his way into every beef imaginable. And I'm going to give y'all a couple of good examples. He got into it with Youngboy at one point in time. Because I guess Youngboy was in his songs using the slang Fulio. And I guess fans were sending a song to Julio Fulio saying, hey, young boy is talking about you. So Julio tried to pull up on young boy at one point in time and press him over the situation. Man, you were tricking me. So you can see in the video that young boy called Julio out for trying to go live on Instagram. Julio's like, we not with the internet stuff. Meanwhile, he's got his phone in his hand while he was recording. And this is really something that he did often is get into it with big rappers like that. And I don't know if it was a cloud move or what, but he always found himself in these situations. He would clarify the young boy situation though, at some point in time when he went on no jumper and was telling Adam 22 how that whole thing happened. What was up with this video of you and Young Boy back in the day? It was like you were sort of like coming at Young Boy, right? What, what 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 was that video? And can you explain that now? Um, he had a show in Jacksonville, bro, and I went pulling up on some old check in. The internet made a check in, bro. Mm. I, Cause I kept hearing him like in his songs. He'd be like, "What you on, Fulio, Fulio, Fulio? My name Fulio." The fans done sent me this twenty million times. Young Boy talking about you, bro. Right. Like, if you go on YouTube right now and say NBA young boy Fulio did this, this is before everything, and I'm be abused for real. So I'm like, what the f? So, boom. So, when I pull it up on him, I'm pulling up on him to see, like, what the Fulio mean? Like, that's mm. what we're trying to ask him. But, you know, how he get pulled up on so much. He like, who are these? Niggas? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, when we pulled up, it was a whole totally different story. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? He was, like, hiding, like, in the door of the hotel room. He didn't come out. Like, it was just some whole other bro, movie. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm assuming you didn't respect the way that your criticisms were dealt with there? You didn't appreciate the way he went about it? It wasn't even that. He really, he really wasn't trying to, like, he wasn't trying to holler at me, bro. He was just on some old, like, tough, fake, paranoid. I don't know what he was on, bro. He just wasn't trying to, I don't know just how we approach the situation. We pulled up to that deep as hell. Mm. I don't know, bro. If you're a rapper... That can be pretty intimidating when you got like a hundred young jits, as they say, coming <laughs> at you. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of can't blame him for being a little worried about that situation, but yeah. But when I'm walking up, turn on, telling him, bro, we ain't on that, bro. I just want to talk to you real quick, bro. I just want to talk to you. Mm. He saying some old boy, 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 <laughs> some whole other. Shit. I don't even know what he was saying. Right. Another good example of Julio finding himself in some beef that he ain't have nothing to do with is when he inserted himself in the middle of some Chicago beef and he found himself talking hella disrespectful about FBG Duck. You know the mad because Duck almost made it and got took out. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Duck got signed and signed out, stupid ass yeah. No, what? Hey, hey, Miles. <laughs> hey, Miles. Hey, Miles, you up in here? <laughs> I mean, like I said, you could see he was just being as disrespectful as possible towards anybody that would take it. And while everybody understood what the beef was about in Jacksonville with KTA and ATK, these little smaller rap beefs that he kept finding himself in just didn't make very much sense most of the time. Another good example is when he attempted to get into it with Kodak Black and he did that by pulling up to Kodak's hood, Golden Acres, and shooting some little videos for the internet to watch. And even Kodak himself seemed a little bit confused about why Julio was doing this. Golden egg, uh, I need me a good this one too. Time with me on some J. Cole, YK, Osiris. We get on his Instagram 
be 21 Savage and Young Nudie, man. You got to stop that, bro, because you called me a Spaniel or stuff, bro. I ain't got no beef with nobody. I just know what's really going on. You can't throw the cross at me, bro. Now, Kodak seen these posts that Julio was making and basically responded to him like, bro, don't nobody know you. I specifically don't know you. What you need to do is go worry about them people you got actual beef with and stop worrying about me. Then you get on this shit, talking about all oh, legit the losses drill, talking about views on video. Fuck you, that's what you worrying about, homie. The fuck, homie, you don't care about none of this. Shit. I take all this shit out. Yeah, go see by, go see by who, who touch, who touch your mom now. Who, 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 who touch your mom now? That's who you need to be worried about. Don't worry about me, cause you ain't got no business. You ain't got no, I don't know you. You ain't got no business you, playing yeah. with me. Yeah. You got no business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Stay, stay all day that way. Yeah. 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 Now I showed y'all all that so that I could show y'all that Julio was creating problems in his life with everybody that he was interacting with. Like He wanted the clout. He was willing to be for it. And if y'all are looking for who did this, it could be a long list of people. Like It might take the police a little while to figure this one out unless there was some kind of critical evidence left at the scene of the crime because Julio was making it a point to have problems. And like Kodak said in that video, you need to go worry about them people who touched your mama. What these were referring to is Julio's mom was actually shot eight times at one point a few years back and she actually made an Instagram post after Julio passed away saying that they were making a documentary about Julio and she says in this post that she begged Julio to leave the beef alone to get out of the streets to stop creating these problems for himself something that he clearly didn't listen to now, I said it might take the police a while to solve this, but I didn't say that they won't solve it because if you look towards the people who are investigating this, you know, law enforcement, they actually seem pretty confident that they're going to end up making some arrests in this case. Now, keep in mind that Julio was killed in a public place at the Holiday Inn Express, where I'm sure there is a ton of cameras. Plus, they got vehicles with dozens of holes in them from the gunfire, and they were actively on the scene heavily from the moment that this shooting took place. And like we went over, as soon as he died, people started celebrating. Now, the police ain't dumb. It don't take a genius to figure out who he had real problems with and who he had, I'm going to call it, clout-based problems with, right? And obviously, Young and Ace and Young and Ace's crew were the primary suspects as far as the general population is concerned. And like I said, they were celebrating heavily. The police ain't stupid. They can see that activity just like we can see it. And one of the things that they probably seen was the song that Young and Ace dropped the day after it happened. And and this tweet that Young and Ace has since deleted, but he still tweeted. We can still see it, even though he deleted it, that said that boy going back home the same day he came in. Now, this tweet was sent after Julio had died, but deleting it ain't gonna do nothing for Young and Ace. We can still see that the tweet was sent, and so can the police. And actually, when you look at this case and you look at the police's response to it, they've basically said that when they're looking for suspects in this Julio murder case, they're looking directly to Jacksonville. Like, they're zero in in and putting the scope on people in Jacksonville. Now, who from Jacksonville does he got problems with? Obviously, Young and Ace and them. And so, the Tampa police, which is where this happened at in Tampa, admitted on camera that they were working with the Jacksonville police to try to solve this case, but they actually went a bit further than that and admitted that they were also working with ATF and the FBI on this case, meaning that the federal government is looking into this, meaning that there could be federal charges coming with it. And when you listen to this police officer explain that they're all working together to make this come through and that it's been a big part of their investigation the war in Jacksonville that's happening I mean when you see him say it he's saying it real confidently and it looks like he's pretty sure that they are going to make an arrest
Detectives are working day in and day out on this case. They're developing some good leads. We're working closely with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We're working with our statewide prosecutor, our federal partners, the ATF and the FBI, and our local prosecutor, Susie Lopez. And I can guarantee you that we're going to be following up and making arrests in that case. Are you guys looking at the social media aspect? Absolutely. We're looking at the social media. We're working with our Jacksonville partners and getting intelligence on that. So uh, definitely all top of our priority. Do you, do you believe that it's related to the So, so again, that's part of our investigation, but indications are that there is some type of relationship there. And is there any of those uh, gang members that threatened any of that over here on our side? So the ones involved that night, we didn't have any ties in Tampa. So again, but that is part of our investigation. Now, I know that part of that may be a little bit difficult for y'all to hear, but at one point in there, this reporter asked this officer if their investigation was looking into the beef between the two rap groups or gangs in Jacksonville. And he said, yes, it is part of the investigation and we're looking into it. We're also looking at their social medias. And I can't lie. I think that that's telling. I think that that statement shows exactly what the police are looking into. And obviously that would be the beef between between Young and Ace and Julio. Now, the Jacksonville police have actually spoke on this as well and pretty much said that they think it's got something to do with that beef too and even let it be known that like if it continues, which I mean, it's been going on for so long now saying if it continues don't really mean nothing, but he said if it continues that they're coming for everybody involved, they're locking them away, they ain't taking no more of it and uh, overall it comes off as a pretty stern warning. Sure, uh if I may generically ask a question about something else. Yep. Um, generically speaking, what are your thoughts about the glorification of violence on social media, gangs, the, the detriment to the community, uh, the danger that it poses? And I mean, unfortunately, I, I think um, young people think this is a game. And, uh, you know, there'll be comments about this in the comment in the statement that I make. And they'll, they, they, they make it like it's, a, like it's a video game. It's not. This is real life. So he has a mother, you know, he has parents, he siblings, probably friends. And um, they have to deal with these kind of losses. And it's unfortunate. Now, the, the next thing is these groups, and I won't name them. They know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to be around paying attention to what's going on. But it's unfortunate. It should never happen to our kids. Uh, and I, I've, I've never seen so much devaluing of human life. You know, it's like it's like it's fun. And they talk about it in, uh, in, in rap videos and songs, and it just doesn't make any sense. Because it ain't cool now. No, it's over now. It's over for him. It's permanent. And now we have to deal with messing and cleaning it up and fixing it. But we're going to keep them off balance. So you can't come in here and start shooting up neighborhoods and cities and cars and doing whatever you want to do. The sheriff says the key to stopping this violence is getting ahead of it. We're taking a proactive um, look at trying to trying to get people to, to change and do something different you know if they don't then we're going to do everything that we can to put them in prison forever yeah bro so it seems like it's only a matter of time before we figure out what happened who's responsible for it or who knows maybe they never figure it out only time will tell but that is the crazy situation with julio fulio that's basically the internet investigation that's taking place now i know i was a little bit late on this video but i wanted to give y'all all the details so i just kind of waited until things developed that plus i had people in my front yard working all week so that kind of threw me off on my schedule because my microphone was picking them up but we back on track now that's basically the story that's everything that we know so far and uh yeah man y'all gotta let me know what y'all think about it in the comments down below anyways that's it for the video guys if you enjoyed the content be sure to hit the like button subscribe tap the notification bell so you get notified every time i upload a video as always it's been fun rocking with y'all man i'm out